Hello everyone and welcome back to another NASCAR Racing 2003 live stream. How is everyone doing today? Thank you very much for joining. As you can tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be doing part 4. It's been a while since I did part 3, but I'm going to be doing part 4. Attempting to recreate Matt Kenseth's rollover from the 2009 Aaron's 312. Which was now going on 9 years ago. It feels like yesterday, but holy crap. And, for those of you that may have heard the news, apparently, according to reports that have come out, Matt Kenseth will be returning, at the very least, to part-time racing, reuniting with Roush Fenway Racing, apparently later this 2018 season. So I'm crossing my fingers, hoping that that news is true, because that would be awesome. Supposedly, if he did, he would be replacing Trevor Bain's uh, ride. So a lot of Trevor Bain haters over his actions from the last few weeks are probably really happy about that. But I digress, as you can tell. Nope, I already said that. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining in, guys. Right off the bat, if you guys could please uh, hit the like button and subscribe. If you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it. While you are doing that, for those of you interested, if you'd like to go follow me over on Twitch, I'm streaming there right now as we speak. What's up, Typical605ER32? How's it going? I'm also on Facebook and Twitter if you're interested in following me on social media. <coughs> Excuse me. Last but not least, if you want to help support this channel and get some rewards in return, please go check out my Patreon page. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much to Ryan Fitzy, Tommy Joyce, and Jay Barker for your support on there. As you can tell, I have a vast uh, variety of rewards you can get for various pledges. It's all up to you. Nothing is forced. If you guys could just even just go read the page, I would be really appreciated if you just do that. Thank you so much for the support to the you three dudes. Stay awesome. All right. Now that we got all the plugs out of the way, let's get into some Matt Kenseth flipping. It is, I think it was like in the one teens. Like 116, 117, 118, somewhere around there was when I did part three. So it has been a while. Here we got his number 16 scheme. He was running in the Nationwide Series that year for various races. No, we're not racing at Phoenix. We are racing at Talladega. Revamped. 2009. Get the 2009. Aaron's 312 set, which I've selected whichever cars were in that pack in a previous video. So thank you, past me. I appreciate the help. Oh, before I forget, I'll either do it now, but if I... If I don't do it now, I'll probably forget to do it later, but do you guys want to see some hype for the new IndyCar mod coming out? This is mainly an advertisement. If there's any painters out there... I know Pantalica does some painting. If there's any experienced NR2003 painters out there, we are looking to finish about a dozen more car uh, paint schemes for this mod. My two I've been working on are the number three of Elio Castro Neves. As you can see here, look how awesome that looks. And look at this platform that it comes into with the team sign. And they're... Uh, it's going to be a little bit complex, but from what I've figured out, there's going to be four chassis types. Two of them are going to be for the user uh, oval and road course setups. Here's the road course spoiler, and then have to find the oval. There's the oval spoiler. And then, since uh, the ride height varies with the AI and the user based on the PTA physics... You're going to have to use a certain car for the, a certain uh, chassis type for the uh, first two, the user oval and AI oval, or user oval and user road course. So you can see it's all labeled there. So basically for each scheme, there's going to be four cars. So this one then I've also been working on the Gabby Chavez car. Look how awesome that one looks. So yeah, we got about a half dozen more, or uh, excuse me, a dozen more to go there's any experienced painters out there, please go contact nascarfunfacts.com. 
No, don't need to save that. Alrighty. Oops, not that. Alright. So I just wanted to get a little bit of hype for that in there. Alrighty, let's go back here. Why did that change? Alrighty. I think we are all set. Let's get started. So I have the grip turned up, obviously. It's like about 2.5. It's the only thing I've adjusted. Oops, apparently the track temperature has been changed. I didn't want to do that. So we got to exit out quickly and fix that. I'm not even going to switch the screen over. I got the track I and I already loaded up. I'm just deleting the negative in the track base temp. Save. All right, load an NR2003 back up. NROL Racing League. Scaling Mass 27 Gaming. Ryan Pitsy, The Great Fireman. Super Ninjas 88. Jeff Gordon. Stephanie Oakley. Jacob Monday. Cool Co Kid 22. Tropical Cyclone 100. How is it going, guys? And I apologize if I sign, uh, excuse me, sound either too quiet or too loud. I've had really bad swimmer's ear in my right ear ever since I took a shower a couple days ago. That hasn't gone away. And I've tried flushing my ear a bunch of times with hydrogen peroxide to the point where it's all clear coming out. There's no more wax coming out. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully it'll unpop itself one of these days. If not, I'm going to go to the doctor in like a week. Alright, here we go. Alright, so I believe the track I and I is for the most part untouched, with the exception of the track grip. Darn it, I want realistic weather on, but I want it to be sunny in the race session. Don't forget to unfreeze the chat. Alright. That's right. There we go. Come on, sunny race session. There we go. Alright, so I don't even remember who was in the lead. All I remember is that Matt Kenseth was about in second or third on the inside line. When he drifted out of the line, he drifted back in, lost a little bit of momentum, and when he came back in, I forgot who was behind him, but whoever was behind him gave him a little bump, sent him out of line, and you guys know the rest. Oops. I just hit the wrong button. Trying to zoom out so the mirror lines up perfectly with the little standing screen. There we go. So it's going to get about second or third on the inside line. And just kind of swerve out of control on the back stretch and hope we get a flip. Rest in peace, Jason Leffler. Race in peace, I should say. Justin Allgaier and Tony Raines in the front row. So I might have to adjust the drafting and bunching distance depending on what the pack looks like, or I might not have to touch it at all. We'll see what these attempts look like. But since it looks like because of whatever the restri restrictor plates are set to, we're already up to speed by the time we get down to the back stretch, so I'm just going to try this right now. Alright, so Matt Kenseth gets bumped. And he flips back into traffic and takes out at least three other cars. And more after that. Alright, that's what would have happened if he came back in front of the pack and flipped instead. Luckily, he stayed down low. That was the one upside to that wreck in real life. He didn't what the heck is going on with that car? Right there. Alright, so that's one paint scheme I gotta... I don't want to worry about that now because I can always just switch out the TGA file, but yeah, what the heck is going on with that? Definitely, uh... Looks like a TGA file that was put on the wrong chassis type. Is what that looks like. Alright. Next. 
I don't know if I'll be able to do that properly. My equilibrium is thrown off with my stupid ear. I'm gonna have to do the Night at the Roxbury thing for the next two days until it finally pops and I can hear properly again. That would be awesome if Matt Kenseth is truly coming back. Now we just need Cousin Carl to come out of retirement and Jeff Gordon and Dale Jr. And the world will be right again. And Tony Stewart. Now we just need those five back. And all will be right again. Now we need Brian France to resign as CEO. Add Rockingham and Milwaukee. And Bowman Gray onto the schedule. Get rid of Chicagoland, New Hampshire, and one of the Texas races. will be good. Get a time machine and bring back Langhorn, North Wilkesboro, and Riverside. That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. Alrighty. Come on. Oh, darn it, he got hit again. Now turned into like Ryan Newman later that year in the Cup Series. Except Ryan Newman didn't hit anyone when he was flipping down into the grass. That was nice. I had the 38 right on my bumper, so it looked like he could have bumped me. Darn it. I just needed to keep going a little bit more straight. I think I waited a little bit too long to try it that time. Dude, the 33 was up on the wall. I didn't even see that. All right. Spectacular, but not what we needed for the reenactment. So next, Nazareth 2. You know what they should do? Raise the rise height a foot, throw some off-road tires, and have them go down Daytona Beach again in the speed weeks. How awesome would that be? <laughs> I know that would never work in modern times, but... Just get rid of the splitter for that particular race. Raise the ride height a foot, add a bunch of like suspension onto it, and yeah, get some off-road tires and have them race Daytona Beach in the speed weeks. Can you imagine the ratings that would get? Yeah, there's no way they could do that safety-wise. Yeah, shush, spotter. I'm probably just going to turn the spotter off. Might as well just do that right now. Spotter, Gurdjieff, boom, zero. That'll shut you up. Get up to speed, stay right behind the lead, and hopefully I will succeed. I had to change it up a little bit for this one, because Matt Kenseth wasn't quite leading at the time of this wreck. Right, I think I waited a little too long last time, so I'm going to do like right now. God damn it. Flip, you bastard. Alright, that didn't quite work out. There we go. Now I flipped. All right, so that didn't work out. Poor Matt. I couldn't get a good angle to flip that time. Holy hard crash for the number six. First me hitting him, and then just that head-on contact into the outside wall. 
Boom, and then boom. Who was driving the number six? Was that Regan Smith? No, David Reagan. Close. Darn it. All right, I'm going to change that battery. I forgot to change that. I'll be right back. There we go. Monitor, position, keyboard good. Phone good. Make sure it's just a little far back. There we go. Alright, I didn't even have to pause. I might not be able to get neatly in line before the green flag waves, but I probably can afterwards. Perfect. Didn't even have to pause. Okay, so we're getting perfectly up to speed in time so I can do it on the first lap every time. Because we're like right up to around 180, 190 coming on the back stretch. So if I get a good attempt, I can just cut in right when we're coming on the back stretch, and boom, reenact and done. All right. Darn it! I keep getting hit, and holy crap, that was a hell of a hit. And I'm back upside down from the grip. Hit again by the 61. Tumbling down turn three, and back on my wheels. Jeez, poor Matt. Matty Ice. Jeez. Talk about a helicopter crash. Was that Scott Legacy Jr. in the 11? It was. My memory actually served correct for once for one of these drivers. For a nationwide driver of almost 10 years ago. Sylvie Gang, NR2003 Spotter, AMD Productions, Cody Spotter, Mitchell Collins, DS Gaming, Dale Jr. Fan 88. How's it going, guys? Thank you for joining. Let's try this again. I might actually have to turn the grip up just a little bit more. Just like by maybe point two or three for each of the asphalt and the concrete. All guy higher over so I can get in front of Leffler. Boom, we're in the second. Or third, I should say. Cito Brown, Encrypted Chaos, Ian White. What's up? I apologize if I miss anyone. I'm only human. I can only do so much multitasking at once. I feel like I flipped over a good spot that uh, last time. What the heck? God damn it, that attempt was ruined. My SD card I have plugged in for my camera, I guess, just kind of updated and it popped back up as having just been plugged in, and that's why this chat froze. Alright, that was basically the sim racing equivalent to a mechanical failure. Like my uh, tire just blew or my suspension just snapped in the middle of the turn or something. That's what just happened. <laughs> it's basically the sim racing equivalent. I, I click back on the screen and I'm flipping. Jeez. Alright, that wasn't what I needed. 
Yeah, having another window pop up and your wheel all of a sudden goes dead and your screen goes black. It's basically the sim racing equivalent of a mechanical failure. <laughs> a technical difficulty, you're right. Yeah, you'll... I'm racing and racing and then right... You'll see the car just snap to the right. Yep, right there. Just the steering goes. And then I do almost like a Scott Wimmer type flip right there. A weight shift. And then I get hit by the 28, by the 60. That was basically the racing equivalent of when Carl, Carl Edwards pretended to punch Matt Kenseth at Bristol just to try to get him to flinch. As much as I didn't like Carl Edwards at that time, I gotta admit that was still pretty funny. <laughs> Alright, so let's try that again and hopefully I don't get a window pop up that ruins the attempt. And let's do a little Canon SD card. Every now and then it'll just refresh and then the window will pop up. It's having it register as if I just plugged it in, but I didn't. It's been plugged in the whole time. Faceless, NAS 64, Jeff Gordon, TNT Productions, Doge Meme, trying to make sure I didn't miss anyone, I think I've gotten everyone else I see in the window, at least once. Alright, hopefully no mechanical failures this time. Mechanical failure causes the big one on the first lap of the 2009 Aaron 312. It was technically, I think, like 10 or so laps to go. I forgot how many laps there were to go. It was towards the end of the race. Oh. You feel the different grip from the different lanes. Jesus, the same thing keeps happening. I think I need to. I think I need to turn the grip up a little bit because I'm not flipping quite as quickly as I need to. By the time I'm starting to flip, the momentum is already starting to of uh, taking that hard right is starting to send me back towards the track. So I think I need to turn the grip up just a little bit more, just so I can be flipping a little bit quicker during that hard turn right. Cause yeah, right. I need to be flipping like right here, but by the time I'm starting to flip, the momentum's already carrying me back towards the track, and that's why I'm drifting back towards here. And then, boom! It's Carl Edwards that keeps hitting me. All right, we'll try one or two more times, but then we'll yeah, we'll try changing some grip settings around possibly. Ugh. God damn it. Dale has returned. <laughs> I think I'm going to need to do a couple settings changes, but we'll try one or two more attempts like the settings currently are before we try changing some stuff around, some stuff. And after this, how interested would you guys be if later tonight that mod the new IndyCar mod, the yet-to-be-released 2018 body IndyCar mod that I'm helping paint the cars for 
Would you guys be interested if I do a stream of me trying to paint the, the Danica double car? Because I volunteered to paint that one. Alright. Damn it. That was actually the closest I've probably gotten, but I went too far. That was almost like his 2009 one mixed with his 2016 one. Because of me scraping that inside wall. But I did the two and a half flips right there, skidded on my roof for a while. And then came back and flipped to a stop. I'm going to save that one. In case I ever make want to make some video, just if two crashes were ever combined. I think I actually got the grip right there. I just need to crank the wheel right at exactly the right time, at exactly the right spot. I just w did it a hair too late that time. But I actually got the right flips that time, and I didn't come back up the track. I was actually going straight for the most part until that last little kick of the tires that sent me into the inside wall. Do the Bob Ross intro if I can. I kind of did last time. I did the Bob Ross music and no one got the reference. Everyone just said, oh, what is this elevator music? I did the, the joy of painting music at the intro for that last uh, painting stream I did with the Gabby Chavez car. All right. What am I naming this? Matt Kenseth's two flips combined. It's basically what it is. All right, so we'll keep trying with the current settings. Typical 605 ER12. I already gave you a shout out in the Twitch chat. BM, what's up? All right. Speaking of which, I'm actually going to jump over to the Twitch and see if... All right, no one else has chatted on there yet. I always get criticized for never giving anyone shoutouts in the Twitch chat, but no one's ever... Barely ever on there except for like one or two people. And yeah, no one's chatted yet except for typical. So I thought I would pop over and try to give anyone that might have chatted on there a shout-out, but I already gave the one and only chatter their shout-out on there. Alright, so yeah, I just need to crank the wheel back right at exactly the right spot to flip over and continue going like straight down that inside part of the track without hitting the inside wall or coming back up the track. When I'm flipping over, the momentum I have needs to be going like almost perfectly straight down the inside of where I went to. All right, stop it, Jason Leffler. Please cooperate. Thank you. I need to reductate my wheel soon. Starting to get a little loose at times. Those of you that don't know, one of my wheel clamps for my G920 broke, my desk clamps. So on the side that's broken, I just have it duct taped to my desk instead, which actually seems to have been working fine in the meantime, but every now and then it gets a little loose just from the force feedback, cranking the thing over and over again. Darn it. Holy crap, into the catch fence. Jeez. Poor Matty Ice. Holy shnikes, that was definitely the most violent one of this video. That was almost like the weirdest save ever at first. And then I flip back over, and then I hit the grass, tumbled a bunch of times, and then get absolutely destroyed by the number 52. Is that Ken Schrader by chance? No, Donnie Neuenberger. Jeez. Let's go on board with the Neuenberger. 
Bam! Holy crap. That comes at you quickly. Try one more TV view from Matt Kenseth. Not only got I, did I get destroyed by that car, I go up and then hit the catch fence too. Bam. Next. Well, that's right, I'm waiting for the start your engines, but that's also part of the spotter slash crew chief audio that I turned down to zero. Gamer, 64, Yakiana Jaga, I really apologize for mispronouncing people's names. Who else hasn't gotten a shout out yet? Tony Green sucks ass, that's not very nice. I should suggest you change your username to something a bit more friendly, but that's just me. Let's go, Allgaier. Boom. Give you a little bump. He did flip at Dover at 2005. I've tried to recreate that once, but didn't go over too well. Have to do a part two at some point. Maybe I'll do that when they race at Dover. That's probably a few weeks, right? They haven't raced at Dover yet. All right. Darn it. Alright, this is gonna be bad. It turned into like Ryan Newman's 2009 flip again, kind of. Minus the blowover. Alright, that one was a fail. Epic fail. Alright, that was. I won't ever say that again. Is that Harvick on the 33? Man, the 33 and the 66 went for a a whale of a ride as a as early 2000s Daryl Walter would have said. Oh yeah, speaking of Stephen Wallace, Kenny Wallace kind of made a. If you go follow David Land, if you aren't already, on either YouTube or Twitter or what have you, he got into a little back and forth with uh, Kenny Wallace. He posted some video a few weeks back uh, showing some kind of immature tweets from both Regan Smith and Kenny Wallace regarding their their basically super close-minded intolerant viewpoint of any other motorsport that isn't NASCAR. And then so uh, David Land was tweeting about the IndyCar race at Barber Motorsports Park on Sunday, which actually got rained out till Monday, yesterday. And then Kenny Wallace posted some, like, really, really immature tweet in reply to that, which is basically... He dispelled everything incorrect on purpose. He was basically trying to post a tweet coming from the point of, a like, a stupid IndyCar fan. He said, NASCAR not better, we know more something like that. So yeah, I posted a few tweets in David Land's defense, which is probably the most likes I've ever gotten for any tweet or retweet. So yeah, a little weird Twitter drama with Kenny Wallace yesterday between him and David Land for the most part. I got a couple comments in, but it was mainly between those two. All I basically said was comments like that is what gives NASCAR <coughs> drivers and fans a bad name. Whoa, what are you doing, Justin Allgaier? Holy crap. I think his engine went down. He was trying to pull off the side of the track. Yeah, he was definitely slowing down. But holy crap. And then the second thing I said was... 
any motorsports fan that will sit there and openly bash any other motorsport or fan of said motorsport just because it's not NASCAR isn't a true motorsports fan. And that got a decent amount of likes. Then I threw another one in there that I'm... I won't say because it was immature on myself, on my own part. But I still stand by it. Yeah, I got Matt Bell commenting, saying awesome job on my reenactment of his, uh, is it mid-Ohio or, yeah, mid-Ohio crash. That was the only interaction I've ever had with an actual driver from one of the top three series. Yeah, that was weird to see. To see such a weird childish tweet come from Kenny Wallace, yeah, in response to David Land saying this race is incredible, lol. I think he was referring to the... Just how on and off it was with the rain delays and whether they were going to start again and then it get, getting delayed. I mean, as big of a NASCAR fan as I am, you guys know, obviously, from this channel... Like, comments like that coming from huge diehard NASCAR supporters takes an awful lot of balls given that their sport has fans dying off on a record, at record rates. But I'm still one of the remaining ones. Through all the stupid rule changes, through all the immature drivers, through all the cookie cutter tracks, through all the forced media drama, here I am, still am as a fan. Till the end. Alright, come on, Kenseth. Come on. Come on. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Darn it. That was looking alright until I came back up and got taken out by the... Taken out by coming up into the field. Yeah, Matt Bells was a... Yep, he said the same thing on my uh, my video, that it was a brake failure. I mean, obviously that wasn't driver failure. No one's going to... I mean, there's a huge gravel pit where he hit, and he still smashed into the wall hard. No one's going to... No one that's professional enough of a driver to get a ride in the Xfinity Cup Series is going to go flying in to the sand trap to hit the wall that hard on the other side. Completely their fault. Yeah, that was... Obviously, a, it was speculated at the time, either a hung throttle or a brake failure, but yeah, it came from the driver himself, Matt Bell, that it was indeed a brake failure. Gabby Chavez, the IndyCar driver, has commented on a couple of my videos, and I've interacted with him on his a couple of times, and I've actually gotten a few replies. That and the Matt Bell ones are the most interaction I've ever gotten with professional racers. I think a couple of Slinger uh, Speedway late model racers have tweeted me once or twice asking if I was at the track shortly after I posted a couple of my videos. Who knows, maybe if this channel keeps getting bigger and bigger, maybe I'll have more interaction with some drivers. I've tried tweeting NASCAR and some drivers a couple times, but never gotten any replies. Apparently they don't care. No. Or they just get like a zillion tweets a day and they can't look at all of them. It's probably more likely the latter. Alright. Come on. Come on. Come on. Darn it. And... Alright. We're all good. Let's try to push the sheet metal the roof back out throw some tape on it give me four fresh tires and we'll be good to keep racing it's like a Joe Nemechek at Nashville in 2009 or 10 whenever that was got my engines a little damaged and, oh brake failure or should I said suspension failure you're flipping right around the spot where Amarola came to a stop no, excuse me, Almendinger. Not 
Not Amarola. That was Almendinger in 2010. Alrighty. Next. Yes, I actually said it normally that time. <laughs> Alrighty, that's right. If there are any basketball fanatics out there, could you please tell me which channel the Bucks Celtics game is on? It is game five of the playoff series, and the Bucks actually tied it up with the game on Sunday. I actually want to watch that because the Bucks, it's rare they actually do decent in the postseason. And being a born and raised. Milwaukee area native. I actually want to see how this pans out. All right, where is Bucks Celtics? NBA Bucks Celtics. Direct TV I have, by the way. So if anyone else has Direct TV and knows which channel the Bucks Celtics game is on, I would truly appreciate it. No, I don't know how to do the search thing or anything like that. So I just know how to scroll. I don't watch TV too much, except for when I have Mav TV on and when I'm watching the races. Come on, where are all the NBA? I know there's like a... Is it like the 600s where it's like a sh poop load of sports channels? I think so. Yeah, here we got some uh, UFC, Red Sox. Alright, so here we're into the sports. Sorry guys, I normally don't pause a stream to try to turn something on the TV, but this is important to me. NBA basketball, what's that? Bucks at Celtics, here we go. Is the channel actually going to work? Come on. There we go. Alright, they're down six points, but it's only the second quarter. Sweet. Alright, sorry. For anyone else that happens to be interested in the Bucks and Celtics Game 5 playoff game, it is channel 669, it looks like, if you have DirecTV. It was on 12 the other night, but that's was because it was the home game in Milwaukee. And so it was obviously broadcast locally. All right, sorry guys. Back to the reckon. Back to the reckon. Yeah, A Rod was in town over the weekend for the Bucks games because he is now a part-time or a part owner of the Bucks. Sir Aaron Rodgers, future husband of Danica Patrick. <laughs> God, say what you will about either one of them, but they are going to have some beautiful children. Holy crap. <laughs> say what you want about Danica, but she is, she is very fine. And I'm not gay. I don't have anything against them, but if I were... Aaron Rodgers would probably be near the top of my celebrity <laughs> my celebrity list. Yes, I just said that. Holy crap, I think someone just went into the catch fence. How did we get talking about Danica? Oh yeah, that's right, because I was talking about the Bucks. And I got talking about Aaron Rodgers, obviously, and then Danica. <laughs> Darn it, I don't know why I turned the wheel back to the left there. 
That might have been a decent attempt. Oh, I thought the 11 went flipping. He just got really airborne. Next! Get back on those wheels. Sorry, I'm turning the YouTube video back on my phone because I had to switch on. There we go, now it's loaded up. I had to switch over to see which channel is being broadcast on. guy here. Some girler. Alright, that was a terrible joke. Whoa. Sorry, Justin. Yeah, coincidentally, I scheduled this stream just by chance, because this is one of the ones I wanted to do once I got back to Talladega. So I wanted to try to finish this one once and for all, but Unless something changes in like the next 10-15 minutes, it looks like there's going to have to be a part 5. <laughs> yeah, not more than like 20-30 minutes after I posted the stream last night, I saw the news that Matt Kenseth it seems like is returning to Roush, at least part time. I can barely hear, but please tell me it's Gus Johnson commentating. It sounds like it. I love Gus Johnson. He's one of my favorite sports commentators. Alright, that one was a fail because I came back up into the field. Next! That was a cool flip, but not what I needed for the reenactment. Come on, you stupid ear. I'm gonna flush it out with some more hydrogen peroxide after this video while watching the Bucks game. my 8, but the Celtics were down by 20 the other night and or the other day, it was a day game on Sunday, and came back to take the lead with a few minutes to go, but the Bucks barely pulled it out. And then Giannis went to Bel Air Cantina, which is a local uh, Mexican restaurant chain around the Milwaukee area that has like a half dozen uh, locations. And Giannis apparently walked in, there was a decent wait for a spot. He asked what the wait time was, they told him, and he said all right, and he walked out. Then the media started freaking out, oh my god, Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, refused a seat at Bel Air. And all I saw in the comments on any article was praising the restaurant for not being scummy and like kicking out some paying patron that was been waiting for a while to see the celebrity. So Bel Air had nothing, did nothing wrong, and Giannis came out and said there was no hard feelings, nothing wrong about what happened. But yeah, just typical case of the media trying to create drama in the sports world you know, when there otherwise is none. All right. As I rant, that was a failed attempt. I'm gonna mess up. What is up with the front of that car? I'm gonna have to switch out the TJ. Whoa! We'll flip at the very end there. NEXT! Alright, still down by 8. Any suggestions you guys have you wanted me for do, uh, to do for future videos, just... I'd love to hear them, I'd love to hear any of your suggestions. Wait till after the live portion of the video. Throw them down in the comments, so then I can... It's way easier for me to see them that way. Then you can thumbs up each other's suggestions, and I can see which the more popular ones are. 
yeah, just like I said, I'd love to hear your suggestions. Hold off on typing them in the live chat. Just wait till the comments appear once the live video is done and done processing. Because, yeah, it's rare I go back and watch one of my live streams, like the replay, after it's already been done. Unless something like eventful happens. So unless I do that and sit there and watch through live all the chat, I can't see any what every single person posted. If you post in the comments, I usually see 100% of my comments unless they're in the spam folder, which more often than not, they're spam. And every month or so, I go through those and approve any ones that aren't spam. God damn it, now the Celtics take a 10 point lead. Come on, Giannis, where are you at? There we go. Back to 8. Alrighty, meanwhile, we're up to speed going on the back stretch. We got Dale Earnhardt Jr. right on our bumper. So we're going to pretend we just got bumped. So we're flipping, and once again, come back up into the track. Get demolished by Clint Boyer, it looked like. Whoa, we got someone flipping. Who is that? The 15 of Michael Annette. Uh, now it's an 11 point. And Giannis just got fouled. It's basically the only way you can stop that dude. I'm never going to learn how to pronounce that guy's name right. Was that an offensive or defensive foul? kind of looked like an offensive foul. Wow, they did call that? On Boston? That was kind of a flop on Giannis' part, but... Oh, damn it. I'm glad the stream is ending shortly. You guys don't want to see how I... Oh, you got to be kidding me. You guys don't want to see how I get when I'm watching playoff basketball. And it's 14-point game, and they go to timeout. It's still early, Bucks. It's still early. Just get something rallied now. Matt Kenseth should run the number 27, I was thinking the other day. Because that would be the first number from his first, or his second car, the 20. And then the second number from his first car, the 17. And since Paul Menard's in the, the whatever he's in right now, the 21, the 27 is now open. Holy crap. Of course, it's the last two cars that hit me. Next! Yeah, I'll try to go maybe like 10, 15 minutes past the hour. So maybe I'll give you guys another 10, 15 minutes. But yeah, I'm gonna... Packers suck. Now hold on there. Let me ask you, how many championships do the Packers have? give you a hint it's more than any any other NFL team suck it <laughs> but hello thank you for your chat and your viewership regardless of your account name that I disagree with Trevor Bain's multiple sclerosis, what the heck? The Brewers. 
Don't even get me started. They've been a failure their entire existence, and they always will be. They only made it to one World Series, and they lost. And no, the Milwaukee Braves don't count. So that's a different team before the Braves moved to Atlanta. It doesn't, it's not the same team. Aw, oh, damn it. That was kind of like his 2009 or his 2016 one without the blowover. if there's trolls in the chat as long as I have more viewers <laughs> as long as they're not robots and they're actually just legitimate trolls oh come on what is your shooting percentage now like 20 Giannis. Strip that ball. Get it. Alright. Foul, but at least he doesn't get the shot. The last time the marketing bots appeared, I believe, was the, uh, the Can I Recreate Dorsey, Dorsey Schrader's IROC flip. If I'm not mistaken, it was maybe like in the early 100s, mid 100s. No, because those I believe were either robots or some sort of software where someone just somehow was able to keep creating a bunch of accounts. But if someone creates a username saying, hey, this team you like sucks, and is just saying obviously untrue statements just to be a troll, that I don't mind. That I can appreciate, appreciate. So I'd be lying if I didn't do that every now and then. <laughs> not the creating fake accounts, or not fake accounts, but just trolling account names, but I'd be lying if I've never made trolling statements on videos before. Darn it, I keep coming up into the track. And we got people cars on top of cars. The weird 28 that's got the messed up nose. He needs a nose job. <sighs> We're down by 15 points now. Yes, we. No, I'm not on the team's roster, but I'm the first to get shit if a team that I root for loses. So yes, I said we. I was always against that too, but then I heard the perfect argument to rebut the rebuttal from that from Bill Burr. Oh God damn it! Because it always used to annoy me when people said "we" too, but every now and then I would accidentally slip up and say it when referring to sports teams that I'm rooting for. I still try not to, but if I accidentally do, I'm going to use the Bill Burr argument. Bucks are down by 15, and it's not looking good. It's still early. Come on, Giannis. He was struggling with his free throws on Sunday. The dude can fly over 20 people and take a 20-foot dunk, but he can't hit a free throw. Surprised my TV doesn't fall over when that dude dunks the ball. It's so powerful. 
I messed up the restart, that's why I restarted that attempt. And of course he misses the first free throw. He gets the second one. It's a 14 point game. If I'm consciously thinking about it, I try not to say we. I usually don't say we because I usually call out other people. But if I, but if I accidentally slip up and accidentally say we, referring to the Bucks or the Packers, I'm going to use the Bill Burr argument. But yes, no, I'm not on the roster, but I'm the first to get crap and get insults from people if they lose or choke or something. Come on, get the ball back. Don't leave them open. All right, yeah, foul him. As long as it's not Giannis giving out fouls, so they don't have to bench him. Foul him if it stops him from getting an easy layup like that. A layup is basically guaranteed. The free throws aren't. All right, I'll go for another five minutes. This will be my third to last attempt. Stay on the, off the apron, Cody. And then I'll do a backwards big one, then I gotta get going. So I'm gonna get something to eat. Watch the rest of this box game. And I might stream later, do a painting stream when I try to recreate the Danica double car. All right, I think Remind me at the very end of the stream, I'm going to switch the settings over, or the screen over, just so I can show you guys and my future self what I have the track I and I settings set to. Because when I do part 5, I'm going to want to have it be the same settings, except have the grip be like point two or point three higher. F. Jordy. How dare you? You're a Packers fan and you're saying F. Jordy? There's a little teaser, or a little, uh, spoiler. It wasn't his choice that he left. His salary he was expected to get and what he eventually signed for was about, like, anywhere from 8 to 12 million. The Packers said, Hey, we really want to have you, we'd love to keep you. Will you take 1 million a year? And I'm sorry, that's not worth it. For anyone that thinks that athletes get overpaid, I 100% agree. To an extent, yeah, the LeBron contracts, a lot of those baseball, a lot of those soccer contracts, those are ridiculous. But for the average lineman or linebacker that makes, like, in the mid to upper hundreds of thousands a year, one giant thing that people don't take into consideration when they're getting those uh, contracts as all their agents, their financial advisors, those types of people who end up trying to steal from them, and their medical expenses. Like having 300 pound people diving at your knees for upwards of 20 hours a year kind of takes its toll on you medically after a while. No one takes into that's not one argument I've ever heard for anyone that ever talked about the overpaid athletes. Yeah, they're good. They're overpaid in a lot of cases, but people don't understand the ridiculous physical toll people take on their bodies for the sake of making a company or a business millions of dollars, i.e. the teams, the organization. Yeah, the athletes make a lot of money, but do you realize how much hundreds of times more money the NBA makes re makes as a direct result of said players. Alright, I'm done ranting, sorry. Alright, they cut it to 11 at halftime while well, I wasn't even paying attention. But yes, a lot of athletes are overpaid. But like a lineman or a linebacker where they're like in football where they're getting paid like 
anywhere from like five hundred thousand dollars, like eight hundred thousand dollars a year. That I think is right on the money. So yeah, people don't take into consideration the insane physical toll. And those are like the lesser known guys. The non playmakers who don't have their jerseys sold a zillion times, who don't have their faces all over TV, who don't have a bunch of commercial and merchandising contracts. And the ones that take the biggest physical toll by having to eat like 40 steaks a day to remain the size they are to for the sake of trying to be bigger than the guy they're going up against who's trying to take out their knees while weighing 300 pounds. But yes, a lot of athletes are overpaid. I will agree with that statement. Ugh, darn it. I think, yeah, for, for part five, I'm going to need to turn up the grip. I think that's been the biggest issue for this one. All right, last attempt before the backwards big one, and then I got to get going. I am hungry. I think I might make myself a PB&J sandwich. You're never too old for a PB&J sandwich and some milk. As Midwestern people say, milk with an E. Milk. No, I say milk. My entire life, obviously not being an outsider, I never understood what the Midwestern accent is, but over time I've kind of concluded it's kind of a subtle mix between a or it's a mix between a subtle redneck accent and a subtle Canadian accent is the Midwestern accent it's a mix between Canadian and Southern Southern subtle of each but still there alright last attempt we've had one video it was part three of the Rusty Wallace uh, 1990 two or three flip, whatever it was, at Talladega. It was part three of the video, but it's still the first attempt of the video where I got it perfectly. So I've had that, but I haven't had it yet to where the last attempt of a stream has been the perfect one. It is yet to be seen. Come on. Get back on those wheels. Darn it. 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 All right. Well, that was a humdinger. So we are going to do a backwards big one while I try to figure out when I'm going to do part five for this. In the meantime, we rejoice at the news that Matt Kenseth has possibly returning at least part time as soon as uh, Kansas possibly from what I heard. So we shall rejoice in that news. I think after the backwards big one, before I get going, I just want to do a quick little teaser with that IndyCar mod some more. Just going to quit the game out really quickly. I'm going to load up the IndyCar sounds, and then I would just want to do a couple laps at like maybe Barber Motorsports Park. Time for the backwards big one. I don't know how this is going to work out with the grip turned up, but we will see. And waiting for the green flag. Alright, I already got the black flag. Did the green flag come? The Bradley Center. The last ever game at the Bradley Center before they moved to the new arena that my GD tax dollars are paying for. You know we're still paying for that stupid 
Brewer Stadium that has yet to see a playoff game aside from that one fluke season in 2011 or 12, whenever it was. All right, I'll stop ranting about non-NASCAR sports. I don't want to come off like Kenny Wallace. All righty, and bam! That was enough close. Front row seats of that contact. As I suspected, a lot of the cars were going to have decent wreck avoidance and really good maneuvering because of the heightened grip. So the backwards big one wasn't as big as I would have liked it to be. Anthony Fullerton on Twitch, how's it going? Alrighty, I'm just really quickly importing the IndyCar sounds into the game. So then we can mess around with the... Uh, the newly, the yet-to-be-released IndyCar mod representing the new 2018 body styles or body style just like I said if there's any experienced NR 2003 painters out there and I say experienced because this template looks like a maze I thought the DW12 template looked like an alien this one looks like a looks like a up-close diamond but I digress if there's any experienced painters out there, please contact nascarfunfacts.com on through their website or on Twitter. Or on Facebook, I mean, if you want to help try to put a few more of these uh, paint schemes together to get this mod released even quicker. Yeah, here's a few of the paint schemes done so far. James Hinchcliffe, Will Power, Simon Pagano, Alexander Rossi. And then the two that I've done, Gabby Chavez. I didn't do Robert Wickens. I don't have the Elio Castro Neves one in here yet. All right, let's go up to Barber Motorsports Park, because why not? Barber. All right, I'm gonna. What if Matt Kenseth drove for IndyCar? Elio Castro Neves, that's right. I'm gonna start trying to post more NASCAR Photoshop memes or racing related Photoshop memes. Look at these wheels. If you look at pictures of what the uh, the new IndyCar 2018 steering wheels look like, and look at this, they're almost identical. It's got the rev meter, it's got working gauges. Alright, so I'm just going to do like four or five minutes messing around with this, and then I do got to be going. a lot less rainy right here than it was on Sunday and Monday down in Alabama in real life. Favorite road course not named Watkins Glen. the crash physics. It's about the same as the DW12. It does have a damage model now. The front tires will come off. There's a little bit of scraped up stuff on the uh, sides. There's some damage particles. And the front wing will come off if you get hit hard enough. Here I'm coming up on Gabby. So I painted this paint scheme, the one I'm driving, and also the one right in front of me. 
and then possibly later tonight, if not sometime later this week, I'm going to start working on the Danica double car. But yes, I will test the crash physics before I'm done. I just want to catch up to Gabby. Darn it, I always spin out in this turn. If you didn't see, I forgot who, but someone had like an amazing save going down this turn in the, the race in, on Sunday or Monday, whatever it was. Some guy got into him, they just went sliding down through the, those S's. One of them was sideways and they both came out driving straight with minimal damage. Oh yeah, that's right, the giant spider. The Barber Motorsport spider, yeah. I know about that statue. I don't know the history behind it, but I know of it. Shoot! Alright, well, I just got a test of the crash physics right there. Accidentally. Look at that pretty paint scheme as we get airborne going off that jump. Look at that pretty paint. Those stripes took me forever to line up in this template. Alright, we'll try going backwards and hitting someone. It's obviously not the purpose of this mod, but we need to test the damage somehow. Let's try hitting Chavez. Darn it, I missed. So it looks like the front tire came off there. Look at how awesome those cars look. Yeah, you can see the wing along with the wheel came off right there. There's some scrapes on the side. Yep, stuff has an engine model for sure. And then do you see the warning lights that came on with the oil pressure once I crashed? There we go. I kind of wanted to test the damage in a spectacular way like that. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, Rossi makes a buy. And Wickens. All right, let's watch this crash real quick, and then I gotta get going. Jeez. Willpower. Had very little willpower making it through this wreck. I will go to Indy real quick. I just need to make a... Just need to make a proper Indy car set. Because of the spoiler and the physics type. The It's complicated. Because of the PTA physics, you'll have a different ride height. Like if you use the AI car as a user car, you'll be like sinking into the ground. And vice versa, if you uh, have a user car as an AI car, they'll be, like, floating. So, yeah, there's going to be, I believe, four cars for each paint scheme. The road and oval version for both the user and AI car. So, all right, Chavez. There's his... This is the, the Super Speedway spoiler. All right, who else has been made? Rossi, AI, oval... Will Power, AI Oval, Wickens, AI Oval, Helium Castroneves, <laughs> AI Oval. Who else am I missing that's already been made? Who 
Who else has been made? Yeah, they're all just the default. James Hinchcliffe, that's right. Alright, save. Now we'll go to Indy and test a little bit of the crash physics. I forgot which one has slightly better physics. I think it's the this one, the 2006. Switch it to Indy. Oh, I forgot to switch my own car to the super speedway. Wing. There we go. Where's the user? Ah, oh, I don't have the user. Oval. All right, I'll have to make that in a little bit. I haven't done that yet. But yeah, any painters, if there's any painters that know how to paint for this game, go contact uh, NASCARFunFacts.com either on their website or through Facebook. If you want to help be part of the paint crew and help get this mod released. There's about a dozen paint schemes that need to be painted still. Marcel P27. I remember you. How's it going? Yes, I know this uh, video is not at all what the what the title is now, but you guys know my attention span doesn't last long. I just need to finish up like the driver banner for uh, Castro Neves' car. Do a couple more tweaks on Chavez's car. This is like that one uh, Indianapolis Grand Prix from Formula One from like the late 90s where there was some sort of boycott because of the tires, so only like five cars did the race. It's kind of what this is like, the IndyCar equivalent. Try to get airborne, shall we? Let's hit this inside wall. Whoa. I wasn't expecting to tumble that much, I was just expecting to to get a little airborne. Jeez. Well we'll see what the um, damage model looks like from a non high impact crash like that. Yeah, you see the little messed up part on the the side right there. Pretty looking paint scheme, isn't it? Compliments of yours truly. Into the catch fence. Alright, now I'll try a backwards big one. And we can get a true test of the damage model. And then I seriously gotta get going. Yeah, I am super stoked for this mod. And I'm very glad to be part of its release, even if it's just doing a couple paint schemes. So yeah, the only way it's going to get released to the public quicker is if there's any experienced painters that can help out with the remaining cars. 
So anyone that is interested, please contact NASCARFunFacts.com, either on the website or on Twitter. Excuse me, Facebook. I'm not sure if they have a Twitter. They might, but I know for sure Facebook. Holy crap, I just landed on top of Chavez. How do I still have both of my tires? Uh-oh, fight! Fight in the Bucks game. Oh, it got broken up quickly. They didn't turn into the Malice at the Palace. I don't have Cota, Circuit of the Americas, otherwise known as in my track folder, otherwise I'd try going there. Jeez. Yeah, lots, lost the front part of that wing. Gee, holy crap. Yeah, that's the main damage. There's some scrapes along the sides and the back, and then you'll lose that front ring, wing and or your front wheels. Yeah, you can see my wing is gone. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, or if you're happy that Matt Kenseth is possibly returning to the NASCAR Cup Series later this year. I know I am. If you enjoyed the video, uh, go check me out on social media. If you want to follow me on Twitch, you can do that too. Last but not least, if you want to help support this channel and get some rewards in return, please be kind and go check out my Patreon page. Thank you so much to Ryan Fitzy, Tommy Joyce, and Jay Barker for your support on there. Jay, I'm going to get back to you in your messages. I'm a little bit busy this week, but I'll probably do your suggestions early next week, so I will get back to you. If you are watching, I'll message you back on Patreon. Thank you for your support, guys. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your suggestions for future ones down in the comments below. There we go. Hope to catch you next time. As always, hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.